Hi, my name is Mariah Gray and I'm here to talk to you today about implementing a bone growth stimulator into the periodontist office here at MTI. First, we're going to talk about the patients that the bone growth stimulator will be used on and the current treatments they're receiving and the problems associated with those. And then we will discuss what the bone growth stimulator is, how it works, and how much it will cost to have here at MTI. The bone growth stimulator will be used on patients with periodontitis, which is the advanced stage of periodontal disease. The initial stage of periodontal disease is gingivitis, which is inflammation of the gums with bleeding as a characteristic and it can be reversed with proper brushing and flossing. The advanced stage is periodontitis which is who the bone growth stimulator is going to be used on and that's disease of the supporting structure of the teeth which includes recession of the gingival tissues and bone loss which is not reversible at home because once bone is lost it cannot be replaced at this time. At each initial visit Every patient will be classified depending on their periodontal status. The scores range from 0 to 5, and 0 is healthy, which is very rare. 1 is gingivitis. 2 is 1 to 2 millimeters of clinical attachment loss. 3 is 3 to 4 millimeters of clinical attachment loss. And 4 is greater than 5 millimeters of clinical attachment loss. 5 is refractory, which means that the patient has done everything they can to halt the disease progression, but is unsuccessful. And the, peri the bone growth stimulator will be used on patients with a perio case 3 or higher. Those patients are re currently receiving either non-surgical periodontal therapy, which is known as a deep cleaning to most people, or surgical therapy. And the non-surgical peritoneal therapy is done in either quadrant debridement, um, half mouth debridement, or full mouth debridement. And that depends on the patient. It takes a long time and you will be placed on a maintenance interval for the life of your teeth. And if the disease does not halt after the non-surgical periodontal therapy, you will be referred to a periodontist for surgical procedure. And that is when a flap is laid to view the local irritant and remove it to hopefully halt the disease progression. Um, there is often recession of the gingival tissues, which can shock a lot of patients because before the procedure, their gums are covering their roots because of inflammation. And during the healing process, the inflammation diminishes and then the gingiva goes to the height of the bone. So that leads to exposed root surfaces that was not there before. There are several reasons why it is important for your oral cavity to be as healthy as possible. Your oral cavity is an open window to the rest of your body. So we often say that we can see things in the mouth that others can't see. It is related to heart disease, lung disease, diabetes. Um, they say that periodontal disease is the sixth complication of diabetes. So if you have your diabetes under control, then your disease will not progress as much. And so it's all interlocking and it's very important to have your mouth as bacteria free as possible. And overall appearance is huge because one of the first things people look at when they see you is your smile. So the ultimate host response is tooth loss. And if you have a bunch of missing teeth, that's not always pleasant. And missing teeth also leads to difficulty speaking, difficulty eating. It affects your entire body. And we talked about frequent recall visits with the non-surgical and surgical periodontal therapy. You will be placed on a recall visit depending on how significant your progression is. And it can be two months, three months, four months, and if you really comply with your home care, then six months, but that's rare. So it's a long-term financial commitment because it's not covered by insurance companies. And if you go every three months, that's four times a year that you have to contribute to your dental care. And oftentimes they rotate between your general dentist and your periodontist because it is always good to have two eyes on one thing um, to make sure that you don't miss anything and that the disease is not progressing further. So the bone growth stimulator will allow patients to reverse their disease status so they do not have to continue to see the dentist every two or three or four months and it's just a one-time payment or payments if you choose that route and it is a handheld electrical stimulator. It's lightweight, easy to use, um, much less invasive than the non-surgical therapy and surgical therapy. 
So how it works is you place the end, the metal tip there, into the sulcus, which is the, in health, it's one to three millimeters of unattached gums. And in periodontist patients, it would be a pocket, which is anything greater than three millimeters of unattached gingiva. So the periodontist would place the end of the bone growth stimulator into the pocket at the height of the bone and put pressure on the bone and that would stimulate osteoblasts. And osteoblasts are the cells that build bone. So essentially what would happen is it would create formation of new bone and repair existing bone that may be um, affected by the disease. So if you can see here on the left, the line A is where you want the bone to be. And on the right, Line B is a diseased patient. Um, it appears that they are probably a period case type 4. That looks like more than 5 millimeters of bone loss to me. And when you place the bone growth stimulator tip, you will place it to line B at the height of the bone. And the expected results, which would vary from patient to patient, is that you would get it to a normal level, normal level up to line A. And the budget for this is, the bone growth stimulator is $3,079. And there are several products that are going to be needed to use the bone growth stimulator that are already used in the clinic for other procedures. So we would need to order more of those, but those include cotton rolls, sterile gauze, and cotton tip applicators. So I did include those in my budget. And I calculated an increase of $127.58 for those, coming to a total cost of $3,206.58. And the use of the other supplies depends on how much is used during each procedure and how often the procedure is done. So it will vary from appointment to appointment for this procedure. And... Once we begin doing the procedure, we will know exactly how much more we will need. This is just an approximate at this time. Um, but as you can see, $3,000 is not very significant price to the comparison of how much money the office would make off this procedure. We have not come to a complete conclusion on how much the treatment will cost, but it will bring in several patients from other offices that would like to have this procedure to reverse their disease status that we did not have at our office before. And it will quickly lead to profit for the company and it will be beneficial to the patients as well. There will be a significant change in appearance and overall health and a huge benefit for the office. So I think that having a bone growth stimulator here at MTI is a very smart investment and I look forward to hearing from you. Please let me know if you have any questions. I would be happy to answer them. Thank you.